What's going on fish nerds? Today I've got a couple of orders from the website that need to be fulfilled so I've got some fish that need to be bagged up and shipped out and I'm going to take you along and show you how I do it. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what kind of box I'm using. This is just a regular priority mail medium flat rate box. And I have lined it with this styrofoam. This order is going to Susan for SLC Aquatics. If you don't follow her, go check out her channel, follow her. She's got a great channel, does some very fun live streams. But this is just half inch styrofoam. I think it's like an R4 something like that and just got it cut to where all the pieces fit in there to line the box and these all interlock you can see this one comes in but not all the way yeah so those are all interlocking and then once the fish and the packing material are in all in there I just set this on top fold it all up and be good to go so here's our first batch of fish this is the trio that I showed in my last video, Susan for SLC Aquatics purchased these. Looks like he actually got a little bit of a fin nip since then. And they're all three kind of stressed out right now from being transferred over here into this cup. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some Seacom Safe, just a pinch to the water to help fight any ammonia buildup in the bag. And I'm going to bag these up in a cordon breather bag. Let's do it. All right, so we got these guys in a bag. Got the bag all tied up and rubber banded. And you want these breather bags to be filled all the way up with water, but you want it to be a loose fill. You don't want it tight because it's getting jostled around in the mail. You'd rather it have this little bit of bounce than to be full and then end up bursting from pressure and make sure we're good there's no leaks or anything and what I did with the rubber band I just tied a knot in the bag itself and then once I got the knot good and tight I rubber banded real tight around just underneath the knot and then around the knot itself once so it first keeps the knot from coming undone and then if the knot does come undone we've got the rubber band around the bottom to still keep the bag closed and here in the box, got it all lined with paper towels because the breather bag needs to be up against a porous surface in order to let the air in and out rather than putting it up against this non-porous styrofoam. So we just lay these guys down in here, or this guy and ladies, I should say. And we've got heat packs warming up. You want to make sure that these are good. I have had them dud out on me before, so always make sure your heat packs are warming up before you pack them up. These are, and these are actually only the 40 hour heat packs. Typically, if I'm shipping fish and it's cool enough to need a heat pack, I'll use the 72 hour heat pack so that it stays warm the entire time the fish are in transit. However, it's almost warm enough here, and it probably is warm enough here to ship without a heat pack um, in Cincinnati but it's gonna be just cool enough at night that it's probably you know my, my best judgment says to just go ahead and use one however in Birmingham where Susan's from it's gonna be hot during the day when they're being delivered on Wednesday so because of that I'm only gonna use the 40 hour heat pack because I don't want a 72 hour heat pack still heating up the inside of the box while it's 90 degrees outside because then you run the risk of actually overheating your fish uh, if it were to get too hot in the box. So that's why I'm using the 40 hour heat packs and uh, the other order is also going to Texas so I'm also using a 40 hour heat pack there. I check the weather where the, the plecos are going as well and it's a similar situation. So. That's the reasoning behind the 40 hour heat pack instead of the 72 hour. And if it was just a few degrees warmer here in Cincinnati, I just wouldn't even use one 
at all. But since it is gonna be a little bit cooler until they get down south, I'm just gonna use the 40 hour so to keep them warm until they get there and then not overheat them once they do get there. So I'm going to use these paper towels to finish packing in around this, I'll close this off, then I'm gonna catch the plecos for the other order and we're gonna to head to the post office. Okay, and so now we've got the plecos are bagged up, ready to go. And I do wanna call out, you want to mark your box with a live fish. I know we like to imagine that the post office is always treating all our packages with the most care. However, things happen, but they will be a lot more careful if you mark your package as live fish. Just make sure you've got them boxed and bagged appropriately. There's no problem. So, need to get the plecos here in this box. These are going to Michael, who here on YouTube is known as a man under grace. Thank you very much, Michael. Michael is a return customer. He ordered some snails a couple weeks ago and now is ordering plecos. So thank you very, very much, Michael. I really appreciate it. So I've got to get this box lined, get the plecos in there, get them all packed in with the heat pack, and we're ready to head to the post office after that. All right, here we go. It's hot in this fish room, guys. All right, so the fish are in the mail, signed, sealed, and delivered on their way en route to their final destinations, Texas and Birmingham. Susan and Michael, thank you very much for your orders. And I hope you guys liked this video. Let me know in the comments below if you like this video. I know there have been a lot of videos just here recently that deal with how to ship fish. I know LR Bretts did one a few weeks back. Bob Steenfot with Steenfot Aquatics did one a few weeks back. Sergeant Tank did one. So I know there's kind of been an inundation with uh, shipping videos. So I do apologize that this isn't the most original video you've ever seen. But you know what I do is I just show you guys what I'm doing in the fish room, what I'm doing with the hobby, what I've got going on. And right now this is what I got going on. I'm shipping out some fish. So just thought I'd bring you guys along. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you all very, very much for watching, for subscribing, all that you guys do to support this channel. And I want to make an announcement. I don't have them yet to show you. They are on their way, but Fish Nerd t-shirts are available. They're not on the website fishnerdstore.com. Uh, I didn't want to order them, get them in stock, have to choose sizes and a certain number and prepay for all of them and everything like that. Uh, it just wouldn't make sense economically at this point to do it that way. But I did go through teespring.com. So if you go to teespring.com slash the fish nerd and that's t-h-e hyphen f-i-s-h hyphen n-e-r-d so there's a hyphen or a dash rather in between each word of the fish nerd so teespring.com slash the fish nerd the fish nerd 
spaced out with dashes, and we have four colors available. There's green, which is my favorite, orange, which is my second favorite, gold, which is my third favorite, and then there's gray. It's like a steel color gray. Also, all four colors look awesome with the new logo, but those are out there, and the good thing about going through teespring.com is that any size from extra small up until it's like 4 or 5 XL is available. So it's not a matter of, hey, Carlos, do you have any extra larges or anything like that? They've got the sizes. All your adult sizes, they've got them. They're in stock. You can choose from whichever the four colors you want, and you'll get your T-shirt. Uh, downside is they are $19.99. It is a little bit longer on the shipping. It could take up to two weeks to get the shirt just because they won't print it until you order it. But they are available. Fish Nerd t-shirts at teespring.com. If you want, go check it out. I really appreciate the support. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you again next time. God bless you, Fish Nerds.